Hello everyone, in this episode I'm going to talk about how you can upload files in Blazor WebAssembly applications. In .NET 5, Blazor introduced input file as one of its built-in components so that we could upload files from our Razor components. So whenever a user uploads a file, it's on changed when it gets fired, which you can map it to your local method. I have mapped it to my local method called as on input file changed method which receives input file changed event arguments as one of its parameters. It has file as one of its properties, which is actually the file which is getting uploaded by the user. Now, if the file type is an image, then you can call request image file async method, pass the file format and height and width of that image and receive that file as an image. But if you want to receive file like how it is then you can receive the file in your local variable here too then you can create byte array depending on the size of that file and receive the file details in that byte array by calling open read stream and read async method then you can convert that byte array into base 64 and store it in your database or you know send this data or web api and convert that data url into a file and store it into an ftp server if you want depending on how you want to do it you can you know store this information on your disk you can also receive multiple files by putting this multiple attribute here and then you can call get multiple files method instead of just calling file and then you'll get a list of files which you can loop through to get the size and read them one by one in this demo, I'm going to upload John Smith's profile picture for the user of placing chat application and then store that information in the database so that you can see that even after logging out, I can see John Smith's profile picture on its profile. So let's jump into the code and upload some files. So this is where I would like my users to upload their profile picture. So let's go ahead and make some changes in profile.razor component. I'm gonna add a dev tag where I'm going to add the input file component so that my user can upload the files. I'm going to set the class of this dev tag as column four so that it looks nicer. And here I'm going to add input file component which is a built-in component. And it has on change event, which gets fired every time user uploads a file. And I want to map this event to a local method that I'm going to call it as on input file changed. Let's go ahead and create this method. For that, I'm going to go to my code section and create a private method that I'm going to call as on input file change. And this method can receive input file event argument, which holds the file which is getting uploaded by the user. Now here we'll have to do three things. The first thing is to get the file. And then we'll have to convert that file into a byte array. We'll have to read that file into a byte array. So I'm going to say read that file in a byte array. And then we can convert that byte array into base64 so that we could store that string in the database or we could pass that string to web api and our server can convert that base64 string into a file and store that file onto a ftp server so i'm gonna say convert to base64 string convert byte array to to base 64 string okay so let's first get the file from input file changed event for that i'm gonna create a local variable called as file and then use input file change parameter which has file property so that's how we can get the file in the local variable here my file type is image so i can say request image file async but i'm not gonna say it because you know with this you can also receive other file types too so i'm going to keep it this way so that you could use my code too now i would like to read this file into a byte array so we'll first have to create a byte array i'm going to call that byte array as buffer 
the size of this byte array is going to be same as the size of this file so i'm going to say file dot size now to read this file in this byte array we'll have to use this files open stream method so i'm going to say file dot open read stream and then read async and pass the byte array that we just created now this method is an async method so i'm going to await this method and then we'll have to change the signature of our method which is going to be returning task now now we got the file from the parameter we read that file into a byte array now let's convert this byte array into base 64 for that i'm going to use string interpolation and set the file format as image png and you can change this to anything that you want if you're uploading pdfs docx rtf you know text file anything that you're uploading you can set the data for that file here now i want to convert this into base 64 so i'm going to say base 64 and comma and then i want to convert that byte array into base 64 string so i'm going to pass the buffer in here now i can store this string in the database but i could also use this string to show the profile picture which is getting uploaded by the user so to receive the string as one of the properties i'll have to first create a property i'm gonna call that property as profile pick data url and then receive the string in this property so i'm going to use profile pick data url and assign this base64 string to this property now i'm going to add a image tag here which you know i can assign the profile picture data url to my source here so that we could see that profile picture on our page for that i'm going to see profile pick data url and let's also set some style here so that it looks nicer so i'm going to say width is going to be 256 and height is gonna be 256 pixels too. and i'm gonna add some break lines to make it look nicer and that's all we need to do to upload the file and then convert this file into base 64 and if you're using images then you can show that image by passing source as the data url that we just converted into a base 64 string now i'm going to run this and see how that looks i'm going to refresh my page i can see the profile picture image here and also i have this choose file if i click on it then my file explorer opens up here i'm going to try and upload john smith's profile picture and you can see that john smith's profile picture is getting loaded on my page here now i would like to show the profile pic data url string which is getting prepared on the razor component for that i'm going to add a paragraph here i'm going to first add a break line so that it looks nicer and then i'm going to add a paragraph where i want to show how this profile pic data url looks like let's also set some style so that it doesn't go out of the page so i'm going to set width as 800 pixel and overflow wrap as brick wood let's run this and see what exactly this profile big data url is i'm going to refresh my page and now if i try to upload john smith's picture john smith's picture gets loaded and then also this base 64 string is getting prepared which i wanted to show on the laser component so it's a big string which gets loaded on the razor component here now one thing to notice here is that when i try to select multiple files i'm holding control key here it does not let me do that because we did not use multiple attributes so let's go ahead and use multiple attributes and see if we can upload multiple files or not so for that i'm going to use multiple attribute here 
on the input file component. And then instead of just getting one file, I'm going to get multiple files. And now we will receive list of files. So we'll have to use either one of the files from this list of file. I'm going to use the second file so that I can show that the second file, which is getting selected in the file explorer, gets loaded on the page. Let's read on this and see the effect. I'm going to refresh the page and try and load multiple files. So now I'm going to try and select multiple files and you can see that multiple files are getting selected in the file explorer. If I click on open, then it's going to load Julius Caesar's pictures because Julius Caesar's profile picture was the second file in the file explorer which was selected. So this is how you can upload single file or multiple files and show images on your page. In the next section, I'm going to store these details in the database so that even after user logs out, they can see their profile pictures next time they log back in. In the previous section, we learned how we could upload profile picture on the profile page. But if I go to a different page and come back here, you can see that the image is gone because we are not storing this image in the database yet. So let's go ahead and store this image in the database. For that, I have written some commands which will first add a column in the users table. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to copy this command and write a new query which will add a column in my users table. So I'm going to run this query. And that query is successful. If I go to my users table, and scroll to the right you can see that profile pic data url is one of the columns now now that we have made changes in our database we'll have to scaffold our database again so that it could update our models and db context so i'm going to copy this command for that we learned about this command when we learned about entity framework core in the sixth episode i believe i'm going to copy this command and run this command to update my models and DB context. This will build my solution and update my models in DB context. If this command is not working for you, that means you have not updated your .NET EF tool. You can update your .NET EF tool by running this command, which is .NET tool update global .NET EF. I'm going to run that command and that will update my global tool here to the latest version so that I can scaffold my database now that will scaffold the database if i go to my file changes you can see that users table now has profile big data url as one of the properties now i'll have to add this property in the models in the shared project too so that i could access that property in my client's project too for that i'm going to go to my models on the server and copy this property and then go to my shared project go to users model and add a property here now we can access this property in the client let's go ahead and use this property in our view model so that we could convert our view model into model and model into view model for that i'm gonna go to my view model and open view model class file here and add this property in the class which is concrete class and we'll also have to add this property in the interface so i'm going to open i profile view model and add that property here too now we'll also have to change some methods here to load the profile big data url for that i'm gonna change load current object method and say that we need to load profile pic data url from profile view model profile pic data url we'll also have to change our implicit operators which are converting view models into models and models into view models for that i'm gonna add a line here profile pic data url is going to be users profile pic data url and while converting from view model to model I'm going to set profile big data URL is going to be profile view models 
profile pic data URL. If you're not following this, then you can watch MVVM's video that I had uploaded on the series, and then you will understand why we are doing this. Now that we have this property in our view model, I can access this property in my razor component. So I'm gonna go to my pages here and open my profile razor component. And instead of using a property which we created in the razor component, let's use our view models property. For that, I'm gonna say underscore profile view model dot profile pick data URL. And same thing I'm gonna show in the images source property here. Now we don't need this property that we created in our user component. I'm gonna get rid of that. There is one more change that we'll have to do is that when we click on this update profile, we are calling a web API in our controller, which is updating the user. We'll have to make some changes there too. So I'm gonna to go to my server project and open my users controller. And here I have this update profile method, which is updating the user. So I'm going to say user to update and profile pick data URL is equal to users profile pick data URL. And that's all we need to do to store our image in the database. Let's run this and see if it's working or not. Now I'm going to refresh my page here and then upload John Smith's picture and click on update profile that will update my profile now if i go to a different razor component and come back john smith's profile picture is still there if i log out log back in john smith's picture is still there i'm going to log out and log in as julius caesar and i do not see any image here let's update julius caesar's profile picture too if i go to a different razor component come back here Julius Caesar picture is still there so this is how you can store images in the database now before I end this session I wanted to talk about the maximum allowed size that you can upload in the razor component is 512 kilobytes so let's say if I want to upload a profile picture which is greater than 512 kilobytes this joker's profile picture is 697 kilobytes if i try to do that then nothing happens if i open my developer tools then it's throwing an exception saying that the file that you're trying to upload is 714 kilobytes and the maximum limit is 512 kilobytes but you can change this in the open stream method that we called if i go to my profile razor component and this open read stream takes maximum allowed size as parameter so if i change this to say that we would want to upload a file which is 1500 kilobytes so you can upload a file which is as big as 1500 kilobytes now if i try to read on this and refresh my page here now if i try to upload this joker's picture which is 697 kilobytes now his picture gets uploaded in the profile and we are not getting any exception in the developers tools here you can also store this image in the database if i come back here profile picture is still there for joker so this is how you can upload file multiple files store them in the database also change the maximum allowed size for file uploads for Blazor WebSMB applications. If you have any questions, you can ask them in the comment section below, or you can reach out to me on Twitter or Facebook. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.